learners in this video let us focus on the elements of music the main objective is to understand the various elements that influence the indian music style the kind of practice that is required when we are learning the classical music style of india the importance of swar rag and tal as well as the various instruments that are important when we are performing a musical event learners we know that music has a special place in indian culture it is a traditional aesthetic aspect of this culture it symbolizes india's remarkable diversity in cultural linguistic and religious terms and takes into consideration the historical aspects that have shaped the music of this country now in the first video we had discussed that how music traditions developed in india we also discussed the development of two main styles of indian music the hindustani music style and the karnataka music style now let us understand the elements which are the most important part of the composition of music you will appreciate that all the potential renderings do not automatically qualify to be called musical so therefore we must have some basic character which would make a rendering music and which is easy for the audience to understand a composition qualifies to belong to the category of a musical composition when it rests on the following three cornerstones first swara or sound second tal or le which is known as beat or tune and the third one is rag or melody these three are the fundamental constituents of music so we will discuss about them in our following sub sections and the part of the video the first part is what is sound or swara swara is that sound which has some meaning and which possesses a distinct identity sound becomes music only when it holds a specific connotation among other sounds along with rhythm music whether it is indian or western is based on swaras and is composed of different configuration of swaras the basic swara in indian music is called shataj it is also called the basic swara since the literary meaning of the word shataj is six we can easily understand that the basic swara is always related to six other swaras the spectrum of swara in indian music is thus composed of seven bands known as saptak in indian music the swar are not related with a fixed pitch unlike the western music it is the musician here who defines the pitch of the shataj and accordingly the other six swar get located on the musical spectrum Western music however focused on the concept of absolute pitch this means specific pitch for specific swaras and likewise the musical instruments were created according to fixed pitches now we have to answer another basic question that comes to our mind how were swar created this question also bring us to discuss a related connotation of swar thus helping us to understand the character of indian music in a better fashion A shruti is a microtone which creates a swara by adhering to a particular pitch. It is necessary for a shruti to have the following two, two characteristics to become a swar. First of all, it should be audible, and second, it should have an echo. There are countless shrutis in the Indian musical system, but it is maximum of having only twenty-two of these in any saptak, that is, in particular spectrum of swaras. After understanding this now let us move to beat which is commonly known as tal the second important element in indian music is beat or tal traditionally tal is considered as an integral feature of indian music it is a process through which rhythm gets depicted in the musical compositions the tal is further measured in terms of numerical content of the pulse in each composition Thus, when the pulse is slow, the composition is called velambit. Velambit, a medium pulse count makes it madhyam, and the faster counts are called drith pulse. Innumerable compositions and combinations of these pulse count provide us with the 
tremendous variety in Indian music. The Taals bestowed by the musical traditions from the ancient past were further elaborated during the medieval period to make a total count of 1008. Most of the raga formations use Taal from this same repertoire. The Taals are generally played through instruments such as Majira, Mridang, Pakhavaj and Tabla. The musical exponents who play Taal music also practice a vocabulary of their own during the performance. Some of these words are theka, bol, palta etc. So they are used in various combinations with tabla and radang in northern India and in southern India also we have different words for the various instruments that we use. The third element is the melody or the rag. This is the chief element of music and is also a characteristic feature of Indian music. Western music is known for its harmony, but the Indian music is famous for its melody. However, the melody is not confined to India, but it has certain influences of musical traditions of other countries also such as Iran, Arabia, Afghanistan and China. The central manifestation of a rag is delightfulness. It is still possible to have a composition of sound which may not delight, so we cannot call it rag. So therefore, in addition to the quality of delightfulness, other features are also important to make a rag. The various permutations and combinations of these features gave birth to a whole set of rag music. Another significant quality of rag is that it should be imbibed with sentiments. The melody in Indian music becomes diversified with this inclusion of raga. The ragini, a subdivision of the raga, owes its genesis to the integration of this very element of sentiments. So we find a lot of ragas and raginis and we do find their pictorial representations in ancient text. I will give you some examples for example related to raga such as Shataj, Rishabh, Gandhar, Madhyam, Pancham, Dhevat, Nishad. These are the examples of popular ragas used in Indian music. Ragas use different notes up way or down way down. Ragas have specific combinations and in the case of Indian music uh, these combinations are experimented under the patronage of various rulers. We have various sequence of scales which result in different ragas that have emerged. In this, there is an importance of notes. For example, Aroha is ascending order of notes, Avroha is descending order of notes, Jati is category of rag based on how many notes are in the scale. These ragas create a sentiment or a mood called a ras, which conveys a story or an emotion to the audience. Different rash include tranquility, devotion, loneliness, heroism. In addition to this, ragas are also associated with different times of the day and the occasions. Now in this uh, ragas, they are less structured and there is immense possibility to experiment with them in the present perform performances. We find lot of variations in terms of its practice. The combination of various definitions indicate that ragas represent in classical Indian culture a musical heritage that acknowledges musical power over the human spirit. The idea of rag is that each scale has a mode that directly relates to a human emotion. Rags are used for prayer and meditative music in many Indian religions including Hinduism. Sikhism and Sufism. In Hinduism, it is believed that rag are naturally occurring scales that are not invented or created by musician, but rather 
discovered and gifted to humanity by divine deities. Raga referred in many other religious texts of India including the Bhagavad Gita. So learners we have understood that rag and along with that tal is another important concept of music in India. Le is more general term for rhythm occurring in nature. Tal are often metered, metered out by hand clapping, knee petting and other physical gestures made through body. The rhythm meter of India is often uneven compared to the western classical music. So we have lot of scope for having experiments. Tals also have their name and they have their own patterns which a classical Indian musician incorporate into their musical performance. In the Karnataka tradition the most popular tal is the Adi tal which is 8 set of 4. And the most popular tal used in Hindustani music is Teen Tal, which is this 4 set of 4. So learners in this video, we have tried to understand that the music element of Indian classical music is very different from the western music style. The rhythm in Indian classical music is very complex and this rhythm is based on the system of tal. There are various subversions that exist. And it is different from the western music where it is much more strongly connected with the known patterns. Now in terms of melodies, melodies are complex and are improved in Hindustani tradition and are pre-composed in Karnataka traditions. They are based on ragas, a series of pre-established notes and the set of notes that a musician can use to develop a melody. Melodies are usually much longer than the western classical melodies. And another important part is harmony. This harmony is based on the rasa that we had discussed earlier and it is improvised. We have new set of harmony that is promoted in which we give chance to multiple voices they perform in union and as a result of it in the classical music we have the concept of drone. Drone is an English word for the phenomena of a sustained pitch under a melody. Drones are heard in Indian classical music in the form of sitar or string instruments. So we find that with the combination of these instruments the leading musicians of India come up with their performances. Now another important uh, aspect of Indian vocal music is the timbre. Indian classical music has variety and complexities of timbres. They are different from the western classical music in treatment of voice. In Indian music the voice is always meant to be sung clearly with no vibrations whereas uh, in the western uh, music they are very high in terms of their vocal lane, range but the timbre aspect is very much different in terms of the western music style and the Indian classical singers. Lot of dynamism exists in the Indian classical music. This music can be soft and reflective on the one hand and it could be very bold and loud depending upon the type of performance. The texture of Indian classical music is simple in comparison with other traditions across the world. Here uh, we have number of performances which involve melodic instruments and we are not very much fixed in terms of uh, the various dimensions related to individual performances or group performances. So these voices they work in harmony, they perform in line adding to the rhythm of the music piece. The structure of Indian classical music variates and they note much symmetry as compared to the western classical music. Indian music is based on the composition of rag and tal. So there is a lot of collaboration that takes place between performers. This development of rag and tal is related with the highest emotional connection of the audience to the music system. 
Now, we have specific classical musical instruments that are associated with various regions of India. I will discuss in this video only few instruments which are popular among the musicians of India. I hope you all must have observed sitar. The sitar is a hollow ground and a wooden string instrument. It is played seated and plucked by the performer's finger. It has 18 to 21 strings, 6 to 7 are played by the musician while the rest are strung under the figure board. These sympathetic strings vibrate along with the strings that are being played for a natural drone under the entire performance. It is used more often in Hindustani music than Carnatic music. The next important instrument is the Tanpura. Tanpura is a hollow ground and a wooden string instrument. It has four strings and only plays drone. The drones create a meditative texture, another, another instrument or voice when performing the melody. The drone pitches are based on what rag is being performed and this is a very important instrument in terms of its performance. The timbre is warm, rich and shimmery. Then we have Venu which is also known as Shehnai. The Shehnai is a wind instrument and it includes a wooden body, a metal bell and a double reed that performer blows into. It is closely associated with wedding ceremonies and temple activities in Hinduism. The timbre is nasal, penetrating and intense. The Shehnai is found more in Hindustani music. Whereas Nadvaram is similar double reed instrument used in Karnataka tradition. Then we have harmonium. It is essentially a keyboard with an attached bellow like a fireplace bellow that pushes air over organ reeds. In this way harmonium is a wind instrument because it utilizes wind. However, it is a keyboard instrument where the notes are stuck and performed. The harmonium is found more in Carnatic music and plays melody, not chords and harmony. The timbre of harmonium is pure, thick and focused. I hope you all are aware about tabla. Tabla are pair of drums that create the rhythmic backbone in most Indian classical music. The smaller drum, right hand or dominant is made up of wood and the larger drum left hand or subdominant is made up of metal. They both have skin drum heads attached to the drum with raw height cord. Each drum also has a small circle of rice based on the top which serves to deaden the drum head making the rhythm sound more pronounced and accurate. The tabra timbre is hollow, ringing and cold. So learners in this video we have understood the basic elements of Indian music. And this elements along with the instruments are taught to the learners through Guru Shishya Parampara. So Indian classical music was taught as an oral tradition with masters called Guru in India who trained their students directly. This system of training was based on a parampara that is a tradition which goes back through the great, great masters of art. Guru Shishya Parampara is a common form of education for the music traditions of India. Disciples often live at the Guru's home. They are treated like members of the family while they study with their teachers. A highly qualitative and a quantitative relationship is developed through the genuineness of the Guru and the obedience and openness of the disciples. So we have understood that Indian classical music is having its own set of elements. It is basically homophonic which is means it is focused on the melodies created using a sequence of notes. We experience different melodies constructed within the framework of the ragas whereas the western classical music is to a great extent polyphonic in composition where textures are created using multiple voice. In terms of the vocal aspect 
vocals are used in both Indian classical music also in western classical music, but the treatment in relation to other instruments is different. When vocals are used in Indian classical music, the rest of the instruments are mere accompanying them to help them to deliver. Whereas, in the western classical music, the vocals are used, the instrument carry a lot of weight in the overall composition. Therefore, voice form the basis of the structure surrounding an Indian classical musical recital, whereas the instruments create a structure in the western classical music composition. The voice is used in a generic way in western classical music and does not always mean human voice. A voice can be any theme played by an instrument also, whereas in Indian classical music we play a lot of importance to the voice. In Indian classical music the individual performer shines through various improvisations and experiments. In any recital or performance there is a lead vocalist or a person with instrument who expands the raga while the other provide the accomplishment and also help in the development of the music piece. Learners, in this video we have understood that the system of Indian classical music is based on certain elements of Tal, Shrutis. We have extensive views of these in our music pieces. There are huge musical performances, conferences as well as events that are organized in which leading musicians of India display their talent. Indian classical music has a close intimate association with nature. Ragas have specific times of a day and are associated with specific themes. This development has taken place over a period of time. The root of the Indian classical music is spiritual. Whereas, when you look at the western classical music, it has its root in factors like individual experiences, significant historical events, entertainments etc. So, I hope that in this video you have understood that melody, rhythm and shruti are the most important aspects along with the instruments that help in delivering a piece of music to its audience. This form of performing art requires rigorous training. It has its own set of curriculum and its own set of guidelines. A lot of people are experimenting today with voices. There are competitions that are organized and performances on sitar, veena, basuri etc. are popular. We have number of performances on Sarangi and Santur also. The tradition of Indian music shall continue with experiments. Now we have better quality of instruments available. We have the facility of organizing online musical events as well as international collaborations take place where in various festivals, Indian musicians visit countries across the globe and present their music pieces. Therefore, Indian music has lot of potential to attract tourism in this country. Thank you.